and 0 0.156. Then you get 0 0.844. This is your Simpson's diversity index. Now, the closer to one, that means it is more diverse. One is infinite diversity and zero is no diversity. So in my experiment, what happened was the soil with minus 1.8% H2O was more diverse. It had a bigger number in Simpson diversity index. It was 0 0.844. But on the other hand, the soil with a minus with 4.5% H2O had 7.733 a Simpson diversity index, meaning that the soil containing minus 1.8 H2O is more the ecosystem there is more diverse in organisms and species. So Simpson diversity index can help us deduce whether an ecosystem is healthy or not, or it could even deduce which factors or which organisms live in certain conditions like moisture level. Also by using Simpson diversity index, we can find out what we can do for the natural reservation. We can, for instance, if we find out that water levels are low in this particular soil, and because of that, um, organisms aren't living as as they should, well, then we need water, or we have to. We find a solution. We do. Do we make it a natural reservoir, or so we can do that. And also, this comes to our further research, further study that connects to this topic, which is G point. 1.1. Outline the factors that affect the distribution of plant species, including temperature, water, light, soil, pH, salinity, mineral nutrients. G.1.2. Explain the factors that affect the distribution of animal species, including temperature, water, breeding sites. So, this all comes into play when we find the diversity of a certain ecosystem. However, there is a problem to Simpson's diversity index. It, Again, the Simpson Diversity Index takes the richness and evenness of species into account and measures a relatively num relative number. But Simpson Diversity places a lot of importance on evenness. For instance, let's say location A has five individuals, each of ten species. That's 50. Um, location B, on the instance, has nine individuals of species 1, one individual of species 2, four species of number th species 3, and one species of 4 to 10. So they're, they have the same number of species, but um, location A would have a higher number of um, Simps in the Simpson Diversity Index because um, opposed to having lots of different types of species, if you have one of them, that one could be, it's not as significant um, to the diversity. It's, it could die and one, one organism won't contribute to lots to the bigger diversity index. So that's taken in, into account in the Simpson diversity index. This means that if your number, if your sample organism species is one and most of all the species are like that, then you have to collect more data because that was, that was a problem for me because my, I took only a little sample, sample size, a population size. So some species like 1, 1, 1, 1, and if you calculate that, and n minus 1 becomes 0, and it's just, it becomes useless. So you want to get a bigger sample size if you want to, it, and to have a more accurate result. For me to get out of this television world, the last thing you have to do is solve this question. Now, pause the frame, take your time, and solve this question. First, find the Simpson Diversity Index for both Community 1 and 2. And second, tell me which community has a better and bigger diversity range in the Simpson by referring to the Simpson Diversity Index. Now, these are the answers. Community 1 Simpson Diversity Index is 0.71. Community 2's Simpson Diversity Index is 0.74. Like I said, the closer to 1, that means it's more diverse in range. So, it can be concluded that Community 2 has a more diverse ecosystem than Community 1. Hmm. Before how I show you the experiment what works, I have to eat first. Look what I found. I caught a sheep, guys.